please welcome Justin Farron. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. How's it going, Swerfa? Um, I was sitting back there listening uh, tonight and um, thinking about uh, this community and uh, the the last time I was up on this stage was 2015, it must have been, and I was about mm, three months away from becoming a dad. Um, and uh, I was thinking about the songs I'm gonna play for you tonight, and they're uh, all um, basically co-written uh, with my daughter, Amelia, who um, was born shortly thereafter. Um, some of them, you know, just sort of through osmosis, me benefiting from, you know, her sort of childlike perspective on things, but some of it was just straight stealing lines from her mouth. Uh, she's, a, <laughs> she's a gold mine. So, um, this is a song I wrote. Uh, I'm from uh, Sacramento, California. Yep, that's the uh, usual response I get. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, I, took my daughter, I took my daughter for a, a bicycle ride in town, um, and we went to uh, my grammar school, St. Charles Borromeo. I am the uh, product of 13 years of private Catholic education. And um, out in front of St. Charles Borromeo, uh, there's a, a statue, it's a giant marble uh, statue of a guy, I assume a bishop, or uh, maybe that was St. Charles Borromeo, I don't know. But he, he had his hand up, he had his hand up like this. You know, like he was like in the middle of a pro proclamation. Um, but, but over the years, um, his, his pinky and ring finger and his thumb had, had broken off. You know? So he just had his, his sort of a peace sign thing going on like that. And um, as a kid, when we were kids, we would, the, like the coolest thing you could do uh, would be some of the nuns smoked and we knew that. And the coolest thing you could do would be to sneak behind the convent and get a cigarette butt from their ashtray and then sneak to the front of the school and, and put it, you know, between the seat. That was the, that was the coolest thing that you could do. That was the coolest thing you could do. And I was uh, standing there looking at it with Amelia, um, and I was telling her about how that was the coolest thing you could do. And uh, it occurred to me that um, if I had just taken a rock and broken off his index finger, <laughs> I would have been a legend. <laughs> This is a love song for Sacramento. It's just a penny on the pile of things I love about living around here. It's a cow town or it's the jungle, depending on whichever you want to hear. We got a couple hot spots downtown, you can get yourself a couple of cold beers. Yeah, just a penny on the pile of the things I love. We got one Trader Joe's and two Trader Joe's, now they're talking about a third. Yeah. My folks both sing in the Sunday choir, it's the sweetest thing I've never heard. We got a statue of a bishop missing four of his digits, now he's perpetually flipping the bird. Yeah, just a penny on a pile of things I love. The problem with me is I'd be happy anywhere. And the saving grace is that I am all ready there. Well, this whole town was just muddy pastures till some of that Bay Area money came through. And now they all look alike, but the price is right, and the kids all get a room. There ain't no ghosts in the floorboards, but them boards are all brand new. They're all glued down, screwed down, tongue and groove. Good friends know I keep odd hours and that ain't all. Countless awkward conversations have taught them better than to call. Plus they know it doesn't mean I love them any less if I never show promptly, if at all. Yeah, just a penny on a pile of things I love. I knew a guy who aimed high, but he got stuck up there. I knew a gal who went south, she keeps coming back. So if you find a place to 
slides are loose and the weather's always there. Send a postcard to here and I just might be you. It's just a penny on a pile of things I love. It's just a penny on a pile of things I This next one um, is a song I wrote about learning how to speak up for yourself. Um, I was a really, I was a shy kid. Um, didn't want to rock the boat, you know. It took me a long time to realize that just because someone's in your family, uh, that doesn't make them cool, man. <laughs> Maybe they need to earn your respect just like anybody else. I'm not shy, I'm not shy anymore, but I do have a carryover from being a shy kid, and that is that I often find myself saying yes to people um, when, you know, what I really mean to say is, oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife knows that about me, and she bought me a couple bracelets. Uh, she went to a hippie shop, and they had some uh, stone bracelets, and one of the stone bracelets said, um, it was Labradorite was the name of the stone, and it was supposed to help you speak up for yourself. And thinking of me, because she's a really sweet person, she bought me these uh, bracelets. And so I was wearing them, um, you know, for five or six months, and I hadn't really noticed any positive benefit. Um, I was at Folk Alliance International a few months ago, and uh, there was a, a, a tea shop uh, in the lobby of Folk Alliance International there in the hotel. And uh, I quit drinking coffee a couple years ago, so I've been going to this tea shop. I like to tell people I quit drinking coffee because it makes me feel a lot better than you. Um, <laughs> so I, 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 I've been going, I was going to this tea shop every day and getting tea. And um, the guy behind the counter was like kind of, he was like one of these earthy looking dudes, looks like he knows a lot about rocks, you know. And I was ordering my tea and uh, uh, he, he was looking at my, bracelets. And uh, he, he interrupted me right in the middle of my order and he said, I'm sorry, man. Uh, and he looked real agitated. I'm sorry, man. Can you tell me why you're wearing those bracelets? And I said, uh, whoa, they're, uh, they're Labradorite and um, uh, my wife bought them for me. The, the stone is supposed to help me speak up for myself. And he said, man, that's not Labradorite. That's soda light. That's bad for your dick. And we both screamed, ah! <laughs> Took him and I threw him. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a sweet song about speaking up for yourself. <laughs> So what kind of quitter are you gonna be? You gonna take it to the grave or leave it on the tree? You were a thin smile leaning on the kind of long face that could get you in or out of any place. Could get you in or out. Well, you can get them all thinking they can take your word. 
Yeah, they might get wise, but they'll never learn. Cause you can spin them so fast they can hardly tell. You can get so good that you can fool yourself. Well, it only takes a little piece of land to keep a good man busy all the best days of his life. Hell, I'm halfway through and still raking up stones set hard enough to break the times. I said a whole lot more than I thought I should. Yeah, I guess a whole lot less might do us good. So what kind of quitter are you gonna be? Your whole body pressed down, or maybe just one knee? If you were asking me, I think you made the choice, but I was too young then to know to use my voice. And when things got hard, man, you were gone. Look, there's your whole story abridged and spread out on the lawn. And so you spent a little while hold up praying for rain And it might have washed you clean But you ain't changed Well, it only takes a little piece of land Keep a good man busy all the best days of his life Hell, I'm halfway through and still raking up stones Set hard enough to break the times I said a whole lot more than I thought I could it felt better than I thought it would. songwriters for as long as I, I can remember I've written songs and for as long as I've written songs I feel like if you were to ask me at any point along that path um, what my favorite song was uh, I'd always say whatever one I had just finished writing right that's the one that's exciting that's the one that's cool um, the deal with that is that sometimes a few months later you look back and you think well that wasn't a very good song at all <laughs> Why was that ever my favorite song? Um, when it came time to uh, s uh, submit these songs to Swerfa, I had just written this one. <laughs> it sure is fun to play. This one is one where I just uh, ripped off a line from my daughter. We were camping, we were camping and I taught her how to skip rocks. And uh, I was back at the campground and she was down there skipping rocks and then she made her way back to the campground and I said, how's it going down there? And she said, I'm getting damn good at skipping rocks. <laughs> so cute, you know? And, uh, she, she, she cusses a lot because I'm her dad and she knows that if she uses foul language artfully, then I'll give her a dollar bill. That's what you do. <laughs> Congratulations, child. Um, yeah. uh, but that night in the tent, uh, I was, uh, I've been writing songs in my sleep. Uh, and this song uh, started that night in my sleep, and it took four nights to write. I'm not saying it's good, it's just they, I've been writing in my sleep. Um, and, uh, 
And if you're a house concert host, I don't have to play this at your house. <laughs> I'm an out-of-work pitcher, thrice divorced, getting damn good at skipping rocks and dressing for court. Well, I can sting like a rose, I can fly like a turkey, I'm a hell of a catch if you could waste the time. I heard a saying once, it went something, something, fuck it, it's a sweet life sniffing out the Jeffrey Pine. Now, can someone tell me why we've got five-star dinners but four-star movies and Lone Star Pride? Let's just say we reconfigure, base it on the universal truth that more is always better, like with sex and French fries. Hear me out now. I got an idea. And it might be just a little abstract, but stick with me here. What do you say? Rather than assessing our personal experiences by way of assigning them an arbitrary number of stars, instead we liken our experiences to the amount of actual stars that one might be able to perceive from a given vantage point. Are you following me here? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Let me give you an example. Hey, Don. Yeah, Daryl. How's that new Pakistani restaurant out there on the corner of Freedom and Truck Nuts? <laughs> oh, Daryl, the cuisine divine and the ambience superb. I'd have to liken my experience at the new Pakistani restaurant out there on the corner of Freedom and Truck Nuts to a night camped up high above tree line on a granite slab on the eastern side of the Sierras, maybe two, three weeks after a fresh round of LASIK surgery. You see, that's a lot of stars. <laughs> I'll give you another example. <laughs> hey, Don. Yeah, dear. How's your cat's competitive agility training going these days? <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> well, shit, Daryl, you know, Chairman Meow, he's a smart boy. And I do believe that somewhere down deep he does in fact possess the eye of the tiger. But it seems like every time I try to get him to do that PVC pipe solemn course that I built for him in the backyard, well I look down and the chairman's sucking himself. Now, I suppose if I had his same capacity for contortion it would be just as difficult to retain my attention, but overall I'd say it's kind of like looking down at a half-eaten bowl of Lucky Charms. <laughs> You see that? Some stars. Some stars. Some stars. I'll give you another example. Hey, Don! Yeah, Carol? How'd your syphilis test go this morning? Oh, Jesus Christ, Daryl, it was like shoving a railroad tie up into a tube sock. I'd have to liken the whole experience to a three-night stay in a smoker's room at a Motel 6 on the outskirts of Bakersfield, California. See, that's the worst one. Zero stars. But you see where I'm going with this, folks? There's more scope for the imagination. Well, this country is a long con, swearing on a prophet. This body is a short ride headed for a cliff. Is a gold mine jingling in my pocket And you know that I would share it if you give me a lift Cause I can sting like a rose And I can fly like a turkey I'm a hell of a catch if you can waste the time